An adequate notice of this meeting has been provided by notice sent to the Gatherick Park Press, Two River Times and Star Ledger, and posted in the main lobby of the municipal building and on the municipal uh, website. Uh, please rise for the pleasure. Aye. 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 Of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Councilman Singh? Here. Councilman Trigiano? Here. Councilman Ballard? Councilman Youngstrom? Here. Councilman Zibrich? Here. Councilwoman Horgan? Here. Okay, we're all present. There's just one minor um, change on the agenda, and it would be with respect to subpart 2 uh, C, redevelopment agency appointments. Uh, I would entertain a motion to carry that to amend the agenda to discuss that at the next workshop meeting, which is next Wednesday, and then the formal action will happen. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay, it's carried. Anybody here on that? Uh, we will be discussing that at the workshop next Wednesday. Um, proclamations and um, petitions. Is anybody here from? We have a uh, public hearing um, on uh, the Green Acres grant application. The first one is with respect to Riverside Gardens Environmental Improvement Project. So, uh, Laura, are you going to be addressing that? Yeah, if I may, Mayor, just to tee her up. Thank you, Mayor. Um, just to recap, we, we did briefly discuss at the uh, workshop meeting at the beginning of the month that these uh, hearings will be coming on for this evening. Uh, these, these two public hearings for both Riverside Gardens and Bell Haven Park uh, are strictly for the purposes of a Green Acres grant application with the state. Um, so what we're reviewing today is strictly, and what we're hearing we're holding is strictly for the following purposes. Uh, as, as the council will recall that both of these projects have been approved and have had previous hearings, uh, in some cases two, uh, for each of them if I'm not mistaken at a minimum. So uh, we're not going to be going to the full detail as we ordinarily would for a capital review. Uh, this is strictly for the purposes of um, a formality, if you will, for the grant applications. So uh, Laura uh, is going to be speaking on both of them, I think just a very generalized scope of work and uh, answering questions that you've got. Okay, so quickly on Riverside Gardens, um, the council's aware of that. Laura, why don't you now I'm on. <laughs> okay, so um, first on Riverside Gardens, as the members of the council are aware, as well as the public, this project is a very passive project. It includes replacing the boardwalk decking that is out there, um, some landscaping enhancements, and um, a flagpole installation, benches. It keeps the passive nature of the park, but it does implement a newer boardwalk to ensure that the shoreline stays stable. So the Green Acres Stewardship Program, the maximum funding that's allowed is $100,000. Um, the funding does allow, it is a matching grant, and it does allow the council to also include some soft costs in that, up to that. Um, having said that, the estimated project cost is approximately $114,000. So you're looking at a matching grant in the neighborhood of $57,000, I believe, would be the funding we're seeking. And again, the purpose is to maintain the environmental nature and the passive nature that ex currently exists in the park, but just by rehabbing some of what we have out there. Um, similarly with Bellhaven, um, I know there has been substantial um, iterations of that plan that have gone on. Uh, this now includes an observa uh, observation tower, which keeps with the environmental nature, provides for people to enjoy the shoreline that's out there. It does all pro also provide some recreational components. Um, and I think you know the goal of that project is to preserve both that shoreline but provide some level of active without being too uh, destructive or obtrusive to that area. So having said that, the overall project cost for that is in the neighborhood of $423,000. Um, the, the funding under the Green Acres Park Development is a little bit more than under the stewardship program, so we, we would be looking for a grant in the neighborhood of $105,850, roughly. I mean, it's, I think it's $105,842. 
Um, but that's what we're seeking from Green Acres to help fund that project. What I would also just like to add as well is uh, both of these projects are already funded uh, either through, well, through past bond ordinances. So funding has been allocated for all of these. Uh, and when this grant, these, this grant application came up, uh, the reason we selected these projects for that grant application is because a lot of the technical work and the design work and the engineering work was already done. So rather than pick a new project and have to uh, expend new resources on a project that uh, really hasn't gone through the full vetting process, both for the council and the public, we figured it would be best to pick two existing projects so we can minimize the tax burden. So if we are successful in these grant applications, we'll be able to uh, not have to draw down on the funding for the bond ordinances for these, we'll either reallocate it elsewhere or cancel those funds. Any other questions from members of the council? Eric, you're okay with it? Yeah. Okay. Um, since we didn't have a resolution and this is a public hearing, any members of the public wish to be heard on the presentation made with respect to the Riverside Gardens Environmental Improvement Project? If so, come on up, state your name and your address. Ms. Burnham. Good evening, Cindy Barnum, 71 Wallace Street. I'm wondering, regarding Riverside Gardens, when did we take a bond out for Riverside? Uh, if I could, I believe that was included within the 2018-2019 funding cycle. You may recall um, the borough previously sought county open space funding for this project. We had lumped a second phase of Eastside and Mobile Pond, as well as this component for passive recreation. Um, the county w was not um, able to award that grant. So, but in that wait process, a minute, wait a let her finish, please. I'm, I just want to let understand. Let her finish. Then continue. In that process, the borough had already looked to encumber those funds for the project because that so, was required at that time. Let her finish. Are you finished? Yes. Thank you. So we were going to do Mohawk, and we funded for Mohawk, but we didn't get it. We, a phase two of that because you have current construction out on East Side and Mohawk. There was a phase two of that project. What are they doing in East Side? There's current project improvements there. That oh, but what is the this. I'm just asking real quick. The current project? Yeah. Um, that includes the bathroom facility that was previously funded under the county open space. It includes okay. a walkway for ADA accessibility right. and then restabilization over at Mohawk. Okay. So then we're using the funds from Mohawk on Riverside because I never don't remember us ever passing a bond for Riverside Gardens. It was included, just so you understand, we had done a 2018 Monmouth County grant. It lumped in phase two of that. Oh, yeah, we felt that the Riverside Gardens portion of that project was a good fit for the stewardship because it's more passive recreation. Okay. It does also include those tables that you like to. Those tables. Chest tables. Oh, the chest tables, right. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Thank you, Ms. Anybody else? Okay, if not, there's a resolution, uh, which is resolution. So we're going to move on the resolution unless there's any members of the public that have any questions on that part of the agenda. No? Motion to close the public vote. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. On resolution 1973, State New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection, Green Acres, name of the resolution, Riverside Gardens Environmental Improvement Project. Motion? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Next, we move on to Bellhaven Park Improvement Project. Uh, Mark? So I kind of spoke about the two projects globally, um, but just to recap, this includes the observation deck and some recreational components. The overall project cost is in the neighborhood of $423,000. We are seeking funding under the Green Acres Park development in the neighborhood of $105,000 for the project. We talked about this in a workshop already. That is correct. Okay. Any members of the council have any questions on this, which we had previously talked about? If not, any members of the public have any questions of our expert? Ms. Kasanka. I want to thank you, first of all, for the uh, progress that we've made on this park, because we started in 2011, I think. Can I, can I just get your address? Oh, I'm sorry, yes, it's Kathleen Kasanka at 110 Locust Avenue in Red Bank, New Jersey. Um, anyway, uh, we're the, uh, I represent the Condominium Association, which is directly adjacent to this uh, property. And uh, we just had a couple of things that we wanted to make sure that you consider when doing this. I sent a, a note to uh, um, Eric and uh, Charlie Hoffman today. But uh, they include, and I think that, correct me if I'm wrong, I, when you went over the plans in public hearings, 
the landscaping plan wasn't that comprehensive and, and specific, so I just want to make sure that these things are included. And uh, the first one would be that uh, you consider the surrounding area that's public property that's not part of the playground when you do your uh, um, remediation. Because that's my understanding is that the uh, grant uh, bypassed the wetlands regulations because it was in the name of remediation. So I thought that the entire property could be included in that. And uh, it, I don't think it would be much. I'm mainly concerned about the trees that are totally engulfed in vines. And that is the reason that all of the trees that died on that property uh, died because of the vines killing them. And uh, I was walking the property with uh, Bill Kastning, the executive director of the Monmouth Conservation Foundation. And he said that there are many trees still left on that property that could be saved if the vines were removed. And uh, plus, it's going to be a whole lot nicer to look at if you're in that playground. I don't know if uh, all of you have been down there, but it's, it's pretty uh, messy looking with all the, uh, the vines. Um, the other reason is, is that those trees, including the ones that were cut down in the playground area, uh, absorb thousands of gallons of water with every rain event or snow event or flooding event. And that's hugely important because that property is getting uh, more and more floods as uh, we deal with sea level rise and the way that Sandy changed the entrance of the river so that a lot more water is coming inland. There are all sorts of reasons. So that's a good reason to save those trees that will hold the land in place. Um, another uh, question is that uh, um, the, uh, the path that uh, leads to the private property, I understand that the plan uh, is going to terminate that path, which is um, probably the only solution to keeping trespassers off it, because the path naturally lets people want to follow it, right? So in addition to just terminating it, if you could remove a small section that's continuous with the horseshoe path so that it, it's not a path that uh, is connected. And uh, my idea is that you could actually use the material that you remove to repair the three sections on the horseshoe path that were um, badly damaged when TNM did drilling tests. And uh, you know, they're kind of repurposing, so my thought is on that. Uh, the other thing, this is huge. For years, the residents of uh, the neighborhood, mostly from Bellhaven uh, condominiums, have been picking up the trash that's dumped in that area. And quite honestly, it got away from us, and it's, uh, it's really bad. I bet there are a thousand cans and bottles. And, but the thing is, they're not always visible because the uh, teens used to go into the Phragmites and the secluded areas where they would have their, uh, their parties. So if, that, if the whole site the whole property could be cleaned up in the construction process, that would be fantastic. And then uh, I'm sure that the residents will continue to, on a daily basis when we walk our dogs or whatever, to pick up any trash that's, uh, that's there, okay? So if I could, I really appreciate your comments. Uh -huh. um, my office is not actually the design engineer for this project, but I'm happy to share that information with TNN, who is the design engineer, to ensure that your comments are um, encompassed in the design. So maybe offline I can give you my contact information so that you can email me those bullet points? That's fantastic. I actually sent them to uh, Councilman Eric and uh, to the I park. I received them as well. You did? Yeah, okay. I did receive them. They were forwarded to me. Okay. Um, so we'll make sure. You can make sure that that connection. Yeah, and so and also to the Parks and Rec uh, director. Yeah. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. If I could just say really quickly, the Environmental Commission is having their timeline cleanup on April 27th, and if I remember correctly, the public area that's around and leading up to Bellhaven is one of the sites that they will be sending people during the cleanup to, so that is on their map. And what, what's that date again? April 27th, and you can find out more information on the Environmental Commission's Facebook page, which is Red Bank Environmental Commission. That's great. You'll need a, a leader to point out this box, because they're hard to find. I'm sure you'll be there. Any other members of the public have any questions on this project? Not motion to close. Second. All in favor. Resolution 1974, State of New Jersey Department of Environment Protection, Green Acres Neighborhood Resolution with respect to Bellhaven Park Improvement Project as spread on the record by Al Moore. Motion. Second. All in favor. Aye. 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 Aye.
under the Animal Welfare Advisory Committee appointments, Paul Prieto for an unexpired term of three years ending 12-31-2021, and Anna Cruz for an unexpired three-year term ending 12-31-2020. Uh, motion to confirm? So Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Um, any members of the public have any comments on any agenda items only? And only agenda items come up, state your name, and uh, we'll hear you. Mr. Boku. Yes, sir. Good evening, Good evening Mayor Council. My name is William Boku, 90 Bank Street. Please just use the mic so that we can get you on the tape. It's right there on the table. Go ahead, Mr. Boku. Hello? Yeah, Mr. Mayor and, uh, and Council, uh, I'm just uh, in an abundance of care, uh, just coming up now, because I want to speak on all the agenda items, but I'm not sure whether uh, during the public comment uh, period for uh, what you call governmental issues, I'd be able to address what it is that I want to address. So. It pertains to all agenda items and basically you have to tell us which one we can't address all agenda items tell us which one please um, Green Acres I'm sorry is it Bellhaven something that something you yeah, already have the public hearing on yes you you, you have so and if I'm you saying, had a comment you should have said it then but go ahead all right so I'll, I'll make a general comment during the uh, section nine of uh, public comment governmental issues Go because I, I want, I'll, I'll come back okay there. thank you anybody else agenda items only okay motion to close second all in favor okay uh reports of council uh committee members uh, uh ed um. Thanks, Mayor. I just wanted to uh, congratulate uh, River, the River Center team, uh, Jim, Laura, Margaret, and Eileen, on another successful rail walk on Sunday. Uh, Mother Nature cooperated. Um, they had close to 400 people in attendance. Um, Kathy and I were both uh, present to congratulate all the winners and uh, to thank the participants. It was a really great day. So thanks to the team, Jim. Thank you. And Kathy? No report. Thank you. Eric? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, the egg hunt will take place at 2 p.m. on Saturday, April 13th at Count Basie Park. Uh, this year we'll be adding a parade portion to our Memorial Day observance, uh, which will take place on Monday, May 27th. Uh, the parade starts at noon. Uh, we encourage all civic organizations, community groups, local clubs, uh, etc., to march in this parade. It will be our first one and hopefully every year we'll continue this. Um, if interested, please reach out to Oscar Salinas at the Parks and Rec office for any info. And also the Couch to 5K is starting tonight, so if anybody still wants to sign up, you can. Just visit the Parks and Rec uh, website. Eric, thank you. Hey, Eric, is that radio showing? The break? Probably. Well, I'll get back to you. It's going to shine. <laughs> awesome. Uh, nothing to report. Thank you. Kate? I'm going to surprise you. I have nothing to report. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Next is uh, approval of the minutes for the regular meeting of 313 2019. Motion to move. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any uh, abstentions? No. Uh, for ordinances, we have none. First reading, we have none. Resolution uh, 1975, payment of vouchers, the amount of 2810000 2025 Motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Resolution 9, uh, 1976, accepting the resignation. Patrolman A. Michael Barrett. Motion? So Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Resolution 1977, authorizing renewal of the franchise agreement with New Jersey Natural Gas Company. Motion? Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Uh, there's nothing for discussion and action. Uh, any members of the public now uh, have any general comments as part of the uh, meeting? Mr. Poku, you're coming back up again? Yes. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, uh, anticipate that uh, might be cut off. Uh, I'm here 
uh, with the permission of the president of uh, the Greater Red Bank and of the ACP. You are not saying that. Yes. Yes. I'm, I'm here with the permission of uh, the... Uh, are you speaking for the NAACP? I am speaking for the NAACP. And I am the secretary of the NAACP. Okay. okay. The reason I'm speaking today is because uh, I personally, not the NAACP, challenged an ordinance, the Snow Removal Ordinance in Red Bank. And the NAACP has taken positions in the past on uh, various issues. Now, last Monday, I was in court uh, arguing this case when the attorney for Red Bank objected and uh, said he was offended that I keep on saying I'm the secretary of the NAACP and he has information that says that I am not the secretary of the NAACP. So uh, today I'm here and the, the president asked me to emphasize that, that I am the secretary. In addition, in case somebody else doesn't believe, I also have a master's degree in electrical engineering. Okay, I have my diplomas, my thesis. And nobody's challenging that, Mr. Coco. Well, if someone's challenging... And not between, not before us, so you can say whatever you want. Right, somebody challenging something as verifiable as the secretary of the NAACP after I've been sworn in by a judge, that is quite unusual, okay? So the NAACP represents the community and we try you know, to get abreast with all issues to uh, let our constituents understand what is going, going on. Now, the judge emphasized that if you're going to challenge uh, an ordinance that was not the right place, that you had to go someplace else and he wasn't going to tell me. And I made it clear to the judge that I was aware of that, that I could file an action in lieu of prerogative writ for that. But what I was doing was a collateral attack on that ordinance. Uh, and basically I was saying that it does impact the people on the west side. A lot of them don't own houses, they rent and all that stuff. And when snow is being removed, but there's always a priority. I mean, historically, it has been the east side first, and then if there's time, you do the west side. And people have observed plows go down the street, and sometimes the plows up. I mean, I mentioned it to the chief of police, and he had even observed that too. Okay, so the main purpose for what I'm here for today is that if you see me out here in council and I'm on official business, I'm going to announce that what I'm doing is NAACP. I'm speaking today for the NAACP and I am the secretary. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Ms. Gregory? Allison Gregory, 109 Bank Street. Um, a couple things. I believe I mentioned this when I was running last fall. Crosswalks. They are not, nobody yields. Nobody yields to the crosswalks. There has to be something done so people don't get run over. Specifically Shrewsbury Avenue. I drive it every single day to get my daughter across town to go to school, daughters. Nobody stops. People are halfway in the crosswalk with strollers. They don't care. I don't know if you have to paint it a bright color, repaint it, but you have to do something about the crosswalks. It's so dangerous. Second thing is I'm going to challenge every single one of you. I'm going to give you my cell phone number and you can call me tomorrow. When I ran for council last year, I did the Red Bank Streetlight Challenge. Probably saw it on Facebook or YouTube, I don't know. There are so many lights out in town. So specifically Shrewsbury Avenue. Do you know, Kathy, how many lights are out on Shrewsbury Avenue? Well, this is the Red Bank. Section. Red Bank. Even answer you by email. We'll just go through your. Order. Okay, so I'm going to ask every single one of you, Hazem, Eric, Kate, everyone. I want you to get back to me with how many lights, because I'm sure you don't know right now. And they're Red Bank lights. They're not JCP and L lights, and it's so dangerous. It's all over town. Red Bank is dark, and it's Red Bank lights. It's not JCP and L lights. JCP and L lights are out in addition. I just mean Red Bank, Shrewsbury Avenue, specifically, how many lights are out? 
because in October when I ran, there was a ton out and they're still out. So we're doing a lot of other things around town, but we have to focus on safety. Thank you, I appreciate it. Uh, Mrs. Craig Ray, Mrs. Craig Ray, Mrs. Craig Ray would also encourage you to contact uh, the Board of Chosen Freeholders at Shrewsbury Avenue, Lisa County Road, um, and it's a sort of a collaborative effort between the, the municipality and the, the county board, so make sure that they hear your concerns as well, please. I will, I will, but in addition, I feel that the council needs to make that an important part of your everyday going. How many lights are out? Report it to the county. I'll report it to the county, but there are so many lights out, and I don't believe that Red Bank isn't the one that has to change those lights. Is it the county that changes it or Red Bank? Red Bank. There you go. Thank Why you. Why don't I have the administrator answer the basic premise of your question? Um, you don't need to stay up here. No, yet. I mean, they, but they've been out for. I'll give you an explanation. Yeah. Like, it's not a full explanation, but it's a partial. And if anyone to wants to get back to me tomorrow with how many are no, out, that would be one. We'll give you why okay. some of the issues are there. Yeah, it's a, uh, I'm going to respond. Do want to engage in a back and forth? Uh, yeah. So, we, uh, with respect to the crosswalks, I will speak to the police chief and we will also speak to the county about enforcement, whether there's local enforcement we can do, and speak to the county um, and if any of the crosswalks. Uh, respect to what the council, what Councilman Zippert was talking about, I believe, and I want to speak on this behalf of referring to the crosswalks as opposed to the streetlights, because those are a county jurisdiction, but we are working with the county and the state in a, a streetscape grant, which would hopefully improve pedestrian safety and uh, improve the crosswalks and intersections there. With respect to the, the lights, um, there are a number of lights that are out. We do have an exact count, actually, as tasked by the mayor and council uh, last year. We did do an inventory and we've GIS mapped them. We're in the process of uh, GIS mapping all of our inventory. There's at least 70 lights with uh, about 40 or so that are still out. We made a number of repairs that we could make repairs to in-house. However, these traffic lights go back decades, and some of them are beyond. No, they're not light. traffic lights. I'm, I'm, talking about traffic the light. I'm sorry, I apologize. Street lights. They're decorative the lights. They're decorative decorative lights. lights. That's what I meant. Right. They go back to 1979. So okay. they go back decades. Uh, and, and so uh, they're, they require repairs beyond what we can do in-house and actually take, uh, take the repairs to the next level because conduit under the sidewalks, after about 30, 40 years, conduit starts to deteriorate. There's wiring issues. There's cabinet issues. So those so are all part of that. should be a priority. Well, we have a lot of priorities, and that's right. the thing. So there's a lot of priorities, and my job on behalf of the mayor and council and formulating the budget and the capital bond ordinances as well is looking at what are our priorities and what can we afford, and they also take time. So this came to our attention, and we're going to be looking at it. Um, and in areas where we can replace them and fix them, we've done that, um, and we will continue to do that. So right. we appreciate it. Thank, Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? I think... Young lady, you were coming up, right? Young lady, thank you. You are. Hi, Mayor, Council. My name is Josephine Gudador. I'm a resident in Red Bank for Dickinson Court. Spell your name for me. You can't spell it. G-U-T-T-A-D-A-U-R-O. Okay, so uh, I'm here because I purely found out by chance that there was a weed dispensary that's going to be opening up at the Galleria. I don't know if that's still true because um, I know the, you know, it did pass on Monday, the legalization of weed, obviously, but I'm sure it's going to be on the agenda again. Um, my concern is, uh, is that still standing? Is that still an option? the Galleria location if it does indeed pass? Well, number one, I don't think... Yeah, why don't you answer because he probably has more updated information okay. on that. Just, uh, Mayor, I'll, well, I'll add those. If there's any other comments on that, just let you finish, finish, sure, finish first your Well, I do. I have a lot of comments. That was my first question because, again, anyone that I've spoken to in town has no knowledge of that actually happening. We're talking school administrators, houses of worship, residents, businesses. Anyone I talked to was like, really? I didn't know that. So that's number one. Number two, uh, I want to put on record that I'm opposed to any dispensary being open within a two mile radius of a small town that's going to impact our schools, our businesses, and uh, 
the, the city, you know, the town that we love right now. It used to be dead bang 30 years ago. Now it's vibrant, it's happening. It's, so why would we do that in our community? We have to look at the adverse effects, and there are many adverse effects. It's not only a financial thing, because for every dollar that we get in, $5 is going out. That is a fact. We need to default to a state that has been the first one to legalize weed, which is Colorado. And if you look at those numbers, those numbers are appalling. Kids are starting earlier to experiment with weed, which is a detriment to their growth and their brain development. And uh, incarcerations are up, which is the whole pitch why we should legalize it in New Jersey, which is a false statement. Incarcerations in the state of Colorado for Hispanics and African Americans have gone up substantially. So all of that is not a truth. And we're doing this for the wrong reasons and it's really going to impact our community negatively. The question I have is um, why do we, this council, vote yes to a dispensary in our beautiful town when all the other towns immediately when they caught wind that maybe there was a possibility of the legalization of weed in New Jersey voted no to dispensaries in their town. Rumson, Fairhaven, Middletown, Little Silver, they all fell in line to say no in their community. Why did you vote yes? That's my statement. And if you want facts and statistics, I have them. I have them all here. I'd be happy to share because we cannot make a judgment and pass a bill because we think it's going to make money. I think we can make money other ways. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. So were you going so to answer? No, I don't know of any application to gallery, but maybe our administrator. I that's what I read, that's, and that's why okay, and I'm going to say something else. I also heard that maybe that's not going to happen, that someplace on Newman Springs Road is going to happen. But my question is, did you approve for the future to open up a dispensary in Red Bank? That's my question. Is that all, ma'am? Well. <laughs> Only because this, again, it's public comment, it's, so it's not about it back and forth. Well, I understand. No, okay. Sure. Well, I'm done. I mean, if you want oh. more statistics about no, you know, no, no, incarcerations no, no. and people. I'm just trying to prevent this back and forth. You have five minutes, okay. so I don't want to use up any of your time. All right. Well, I think I've concluded. covered okay. what you think, you know, what my thoughts are. Okay. Um, so, one question for you. Are you referring to medicinal or recreation? Yeah. Both. Both. Okay. Um, so, the governing body um, amended the zoning ordinances for the borough to allow for medicinal marijuana that is licensed by the state, not recreational, that was not discussed, uh, has not come up. Okay. Um, with respect to any applications that have come forward, right, one application has come forward for the Galleria, okay, but I would caution you and the public for jumping to conclusions or, or assuming or relying on rumors getting the facts. So you're saying that they approved it. They actually did not approve it. Well, okay. no, well I, so if, I read was an no, article. I so this isn't back and forth. Right, you're, you're, right. You're done. I just want to finish. So they did not approve it. An application did come into the zoning department to request whether that fits within the parameters of the zoning ordinance. And the zoning department, the planning department, denied that application. Okay. So there is no uh, dispensary that is right now planned for that location that's been approved by the borough. Okay. The mayor and council do not approve the individual applications either. So if it is conforming with the zoning ordinances, the planning department would approve it. If it's not conforming, the applicant then has the opportunity to go to one of the land use boards, for example, the zoning board of adjustment to request the variance. And that's where it would go from there. But that has not happened. As with respect to anything on Shrewsbury Avenue as well, we have not received any Newman suggestions. Springs, on Newman right. Springs, mm -hmm. I apologize. Mm -hmm. We have not received an application thus far. So how would I know if an application's been filed and what do we do as the public to say no, that we don't want this? What, we're, what say do we have? Is that all? Because you said you're all, you're done and here we are again. Well, it's a big topic, you know? Right. It's no, a big topic. I've exhausted your five minutes and I have to respect the rules of the mayor and council. So uh, if you're done, you can have a seat. I'll, I'll answer it one last time now. Okay, thank you. All right. Okay. Any 
anybody else? Ms. Burnham. Cindy Burnham, 71 Wallace Street. I just uh, wanted to make you aware regarding crosswalks. Um, the ones on Broad Street are barely visible. Summer's coming up. I have suggested to DPW that you do the crosswalks in the spring instead of in the fall because that's when you always do your brush and your leaf pickup. But you guys always do your crosswalks in the fall. But this is really the time that we need it. So I just wanted to make you aware of that. Right on Broad Street, you can't even see the crosswalks. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? If not, uh, yeah. Just for the benefit of the governing body and the public, um, the intersections on Broad Street and uh, around town actually are being queued up for painting. Uh, we've been waiting for the cold weather, so we, we purchased the paint machine in the fall, which is why some painting was done in the fall. But the plan is to do a lot more this spring. Uh, the stalls in the parking lots were, uh, were done and we're moving on to more intersections. Some of the crosswalks require uh, more patching, and we're also looking at part of the 2018-2019 road improvement project to mill some of those crosswalks just a little bit, repave them so they're safe for pedestrians, and we'll strike them at that time. Thank you. Uh, there is one additional item before we uh, move on, and that is, I, I, I see Denzel here, right, Donaldson, Mr. Donaldson, you're here for a uh, men's breakfast, aren't you? Yes. Somehow you don't look like Michael Ayers. I thought he was going to be here. Come on up. Uh, the Pilgrim Baptist Church and their men's fellowship for the past 30 years have had an extraordinary gathering every single March and that is the annual Pilgrim Baptist Church Men's Breakfast. And uh, uh, it's been going on for uh, 30 years. And Denzel was not involved 30 years ago because he was still in high school. <laughs> but um, for, uh, fortunately, I, I, I've been going for about 30 years and it's wonderful to see the community come together, the men of the community of Pilgrim come together and for uh, one day worship together as well as uh, uh, share fellowship together and great food. But this year we celebrated the 30th anniversary. I know the council president was uh, able to join me, and some of the others were uh, involved in other meetings, so uh, they, they were there in spirit. But the proclamation reads as follows Whereas the men's fellowship breakfast at Pilgrim Baptist Church of Red Bank will be celebrating, I should say, has celebrated their 30th anniversary on Saturday, March 16, 2019, and whereas the organization was founded as a way to bring men of the congregation together to address a need for community outreach and raise awareness. And whereas over the years, the group has welcomed participants from all aspects of the community, including local, county, and state officials, uh, such mayors and police chiefs, fire officials, pastors, judges, senators, and many more are available. And whereas the group began with 250 participants at its first breakfast and has grown to as many as 400, and whereas the participants focus on community outreach, particularly the youth of the community teaching young men to respect the police, their families, and young women, and older women, and whereas the men of Pilgrim saw the need to reach out to their men to make improvements in the community, now therefore I must call Madam Mayor and Borough Red Bank, who hereby commend and congratulate the Men's Fellowship Breakfast of Pilgrim Baptist Church of Red Bank, <coughs> and proclaim March 19th, 2019 is a day of recognition as they celebrate their 30th anniversary uh, of dedicated service to our community. Thank you. Thank last meeting of the uh, NAACP, uh, this old lady came by and uh, asked for assistance in negotiating uh, some kind of a code enforcement uh, uh, problem. I'd like some guidelines on how we should address it. 
It involves some kind of a stucco uh, after work, and uh, the contractors claim that this season. What does that have to do with the borough? Well, I, the attorney for the borough has said that the public employees should not speak to me. You know, and since I'm the secretary, I'm trying to get some guidelines on uh, how we should address this from the NAACP so that uh, we can negotiate some kind of uh, uh, a reasonable time. We could uh, certainly talk to any representative of the NAACP that doesn't have multiple pending litigations against the town. I think right. that would be the best place to proceed. All right. And, and, the, and the, you sh that person should approach who? The administrator, as you got shot. Yeah, all right, thanks. Thank you. All right, so we already closed the public hearing. Uh, we need an executive session to discuss reverse tax appeals and river towers litigation, and no formal action will be taken this evening. We'll entertain a motion to adjourn the executive session. So, second. Second. All in favor? Aye. We are adjourned. Thank you.